Okay. I love it. Well, welcome, okay. my friends from the Monica Go podcast. I am delighted, delighted today that you guys are connecting, not only on the podcast and different platforms and on our YouTube channel. That's why I'm doing this uh, in this version right now, because I got you guys have to meet the faces behind all these stories. And I have a precious lady. She is in California, in Yukaipa. Did I say that right? And then she's Miss Hooray, Susan. Hooray, Monica, and you did. Yeah, I did that. <laughs> and I am so excited to have you, my dear lady. She's an author. She's a she's a, a, a treasure in itself. When you open her up, as she will today with you, I think you will be inspired. You will be taught. And you will dig into your own soul to bring it up as we do it at the Monica Go podcast. We go back to basics. Well, this lady is successful, but she has a, a background on her story. Susan, thank you so much for coming into my podcast, to the People's Podcast, and to bringing in your story. Give us a little bit of that Polish beauty <laughs> from your family. And how was that all about? And tell us about your books and your writings and all that good stuff. Well, thank you for having me, Monica. I really appreciate being on your podcast. And I hope to be um, inspirational to your listeners. Uh, this is my new book that came out a few weeks ago. It's called Sow in Tears, Reap in Joy. Mm -hmm. I got the title from the Bible as in reaping and sowing. And it tells us my own true journey as a little girl growing up uh, in a silent home where no emotional um, expression was allowed and children were only to be seen and not heard. Mm -hmm. And if I was to speak up, I was told to be quiet, sit down, we don't want your opinion, and so forth. The reason why this is important, somebody might think, well, so what? Kids have nothing to say. However, this created the woman who grew up wanting to escape feeling that there was no voice, no person. I felt that I was basically a body and a head, but no spirit, no emotions. Wow. I got married to a man who was a Navy pilot. And the reason why I chose him, of course, this is in retrospect, was because I wanted to escape feeling like nobody. How old were you at that point? Well, I was uh, 23, just basically graduated from college. We had our um, relationship, long-term relationship with Sinal Mail and Landline because that's what there was back in the day. And so we really didn't know each other that well. So he grew up in an emotionally um, abusive family as well. This is all in hindsight. Mm. So we were not prepared to be parents. Now, I didn't realize that it was a difficult journey to be a military wife. But as it was, I was not prepared to deal with emotions. So when he would come and go and come and go, and there was a lot of strain in our marriage, as you can imagine with yeah. a distant spouse, a distant he was spouse, traveling all over. You couldn't even talk to him because you didn't even know how to talk your emotions out. That must have been so hurtful. Yes, it was. How long was this? This was 24 years. Wow. Wow. So when he finally left, he gave me the divorce papers in 1997, I felt like a broken woman. I didn't know who I was because in my mind, I was Mrs. Flying Pilot. Oh, Lord. That, <laughs> that was kind of like something that really kept you up and you thought that that was going to keep you up. You were a person, the right. flying pilot title lady that you were. Right, right. That's, that's who I was. What happened when you touched pit ground? When I hit ground, I said, Lord, help me with this marriage. And of course, I prayed because anytime I'd had problems throughout my life, I always reached out to the Lord. So I prayed. I had all my Bible study friends praying. And I said, Lord, do you want to heal this marriage? Well, after six months of praying, 
me praying, my Bible study friends praying, I could hear a clear no. So I know that when the Lord says no to one path, he's leading us to another path. Exactly. And so when I had that realization, I said, wow, I've been praying diligently for actually for years that things would get better. Then when he left praying urgently, but then when that was not transpiring, I said, I know the Lord has another plan for me. So just like it says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans I have for you, said the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Yes. So I literally felt myself walking through a door into an unknown path. Wow. Okay, so that took you that amount of time. You didn't know who you were. You were the flying lady. Now, where did books come in? Where did writing <laughs> come in? Where, where did the business that you run now, where did that <laughs> all come in? Because it's, you know how many women go through that? And I always yes. think, well, I used to think, not right now, but this is a confirmation that Latino women uh, sometimes have so much burden because they can't say not all of them please don't get me wrong yes. but you right. see a lot in the latino community yes you have all this burden that you can't talk that you're submissive with your husband blah 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 blah, blah. right right, right. In, in in a woman like you that you were born here in the states that you have you had this emotional crush inside you were crushed but what is that success story i know that god is part of your life and yes that is that is so important and people need to understand how important god is in the mix of all this turmoil and yeah. just give us that that's definitely that's true amazing. monica yes. and, and there's just so many ways we can go on the conversation first a little nod to the latino community because i was a teacher for 20 years in southern california which is majorly um hispanic and so the students that I taught were uh, English language learners, and I would have to speak to their parents in my broken Spanish. And you're right. So many of us feel like we don't have a voice. We don't have any authority with which to speak. But one of my other strategies besides prayer was reaching in, and that is looking for the resources I need to grow. So in the back of my book, So in Tears, which is my transformational journey, I have provided the reader with a pretty lengthy bibliography of resources wow. because we do not know what we don't know, right? Exactly. And when we find ourselves crushed by, you know, our spouses left us, infidelity, I had no family support at all. Mm. We have to look for resources. So one of the places I looked was books, books that could support me. And I learned about a vocabulary I'd never heard before. I wondered why other women were able to cry so easily. In my life, I was not allowed to cry or feel anything. So then when my husband left, I knew I needed a therapist. So I reached out for a therapist. That journey itself, which took many years, I felt like I was crying for the little lost girl who was not allowed to speak, as well as for the abandoned woman with the broken marriage. Wow. Wow. Oof. Not allowed to cry. <laughs> not allowed to speak. Oh, geez. right. That is a lot to, to, to live. But, in. You know, one of the other strategies that I used during my life, which I didn't realize till many years later, I would keep a journal. I have journals that go back to my elementary days. The only thing I can think of is that it was probably a survival mechanism that I would write in my journal different things that happened every day for decades. Now, just for an example, for your readers, my grandma died when I was 16. 
just to show you how repressed everything was, I wrote in my journal, Nanny died today. I couldn't go to the football game. Oh, brother, are you serious? I am serious. And, and it's not even funny. It's not even funny. Because when somebody died or disappeared, they just like whoosh, wiped off the face of the earth. Okay. When Dead did about. you cry? When did you cry for the first time? Do you recall that moment? <laughs> yeah. After I got divorced, <laughs> then I felt, yeah, that's a couple of decades of tears, right? Wow. 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 So then I was crying for the little girl that was lost, which you can see on the cover of my book, as well as the woman with the broken marriage, Mrs. Flying Pilot. And her two battered daughters, emotionally battered. And so there was a lot of pieces to pick up. Wow, that is so intense. You know that you're a confirmation for my life right now, Miss Susan. It's, it, Why is that, Monica? Miss Susie, um, I, I'm doing, I'm putting together with my team um, a journal because I'm going to do an event in a, in a certain city here in Florida and it's called the little girl in me. Oh, and you wow. bring up this portion. Oh my God. You have it, got to read my book. Uh, I'll send, I'll send you a copy of my book. Please do that. Just yeah. my, my, my heart, my spirit. Wow. What a confirmation from the Lord through your life, Miss Susie. And, and 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 doesn't the Lord always put people in our lives that we need to connect with? Wow, yeah, definitely. Right? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> oh, now I I, I want to cry, and I'm a crier, and I That's I'm okay. not gonna, I'm gonna whoop, I need to <laughs> maintain it. <laughs> oh Jesus, Miss Susie, tell us tell us um. Tell us when, when was that breakthrough? Give us that, that portion of that breakthrough. What happened? What, what did God do to restore your life out of so much emotional shutdown? Yeah. Well, as I say, you know, and I want your readers to under and your listeners to understand it was a journey. It mm -hmm. was not a bus ride from point A to point B. It was a definite journey, which I, unwittingly documented in my journals over the years describing the pain the anguish the uncertainty the frustration but it was also a journey through discovery that's why i put the bibliography because that was so important to my journey i had to learn about emotions i had to learn about boundaries i had to learn that there were quote crazy people out there you know, some people say that person makes me crazy. Well, yes. Yes, exactly. People that don't serve people that don't serve us, but we're when we're in enmeshed relationships with them, we can't even find out who we are and who we're meant to be. Exactly. Yes, ma'am. That is so true. That is so true. And I, I think that this um this um this portion of the Monica Go podcast will really in depth a lot of women do you know you have enough spanish to do this in spanish or not because we need no, to I'd have, I'd have to prepare it in spanish but if i prepared it in spanish i could read it oh okay so okay. you prepare that so we could do that in spanish you because we need to, uh, people to be listen to it to in spanish because yeah i i spoke broken spanish to the parents of my my uh students for many That's, years oh, and beautiful. i didn't care how it sounded I figured it out, but you figured it out. Read it in Spanish so that your audience would be able to understand it in their heart. Because if that's their heart language, they have to hear it in their heart, even if it's broken. Most definitely. Most definitely. So you have a business, you're a writer. Give yes. us some input on that because this is a platform where you could, you know, take it all out because people will look for you. And uh, we'll see you and right. we'll follow you because it's important to be followed by people that need you. We all have a platform that people will need what we have. 
and you have a lot to give Miss Susie. Mm -hmm. And and thank you, Monica. And that's why I do like to share my business because this has been transformational to many and who I'm speaking to. This business is called LifeWave. I didn't invent the business, but I discovered the business in 2000. (laughs) Excuse me. I don't have a bottle of water here. In 2009, when I was suffering severely from arthritis and I was always praying that the Lord would help me out as he has in all different other passages, someone came into my classroom and she looked at my hands and she said, Susie, what's wrong with your hands? I said, oh, I have arthritis. She said, well, I have a product that someone introduced me to that you should use. She was the mother of one of my students. And when I tried this product in a month, I went from this to this. Natural hands. Got rid of my pain. So then, I was on another fantastic um, Mr. Toad's wild ride discovering another beautiful thing about life that could enhance people's health. This was without any drugs. And so that has been my business since I retired from teaching. Wow. That's that's another whole, that's another whole show. I do podcasts. That is a sustainer in your life. That is your business. That's what you 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 gain your 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 income. income from. That's beautiful. Now, did you ever get remarried after all of this stuff? I'm yeah. kind of like hearing everywhere. <laughs> yes, you did. I did. The Lord led me to uh, a wonderful man, and you know what? After I was divorced, and I went through therapy, I went through divorce recovery. Uh, you know, so many journals of writing discovering all the things that I didn't know (laughs) about boundaries. Then I went to a Christian um, workshop and it said, imagine the partner that you're meant to look for. So I had three things. He had to be a Christian because my first husband, unfortunately, was not a Christian, not living with the Lord. And as I said in my book, it doesn't mean a person who's like a you know, speaking the words, but not walking the truth. Okay. So being a Christian was my first choice in a mate. Then I wanted to make sure I didn't want a smoker in my family. So I didn't want that. And then I said, number three, he can be any kind of occupation that the Lord will bring. I don't care. We can work that out. With him, very specific. (laughs) But see that that had to be a Christian because I already tried the other brand and that wasn't so life sustaining. <laughs> I already tried the other brand. I love that. <laughs> it didn't work. Right. Yeah, it didn't okay. work. And so the Lord led me to a Christian man. And so we were able to build our life around the Lord, going to church together, praying together. And I'll tell you, he was a light to me because. He had a more healthy upbringing, so he knew what was healthy response and what was not. So if I would fall off in my thinking about was the right thing to do or not the right thing to do, he would be able to lead me in the correct direction. Beautiful, beautiful. You had a a personal husband and a personal coach. (laughs) That's it. And he was. He was actually a coach. He was a baseball coach as well. <laughs> oh, okay. That's lovely. I love that. How long have you been married with this super coach guy? Uh, <laughs> we've been married since uh, 2003. So next year will be 20 years. Wow. That's a long time. Well, yes. Restoration is in the house. And, and I think this restoration. Is- Yes, ma'am, because I think that people that have gone through trauma with divorce, with adultery, that you've been, yes. you know, left because the other one had a nicer body or because right. she was sexy or whatever <laughs> the nonsense that we see nowadays, uh, that you have restoration that comes from the Lord, that one day your beauty is going to escape and you will have the beauty that was that is within all the time. 
And those type of guys are the treasure guys that, right. that if right. you're looking at one, that one you have to take care of, which is very and important. Just, let me just add one more little tidbit. When I was married to Mr. Flying Pilot, anytime I was sad or lonely, or worry or had any kind of emotional um, response, he would say, you're having a nervous breakdown. So this like shut the door. It was just like when I was a little girl and I wasn't allowed to speak. So all these emotions were just pushed down, pushed down, triggered. pushed down. You were triggered all the time. Exactly. Wow. And my grandpa did have a, a time in, what they called an insane asylum back then. He disappeared for six months and then came out. Nobody ever spoke about what happened because things just happened. I call them like branches of the tree. The limb would just fall off and you never spoke about that again. Hmm. Wow. When you, when, you, when you talk, you bring so much liberty to, to, the, to the table. And yes. you see people have things that are unresponsive no answers whatsoever yes with things yes. like that you know okay he left or did he leave right and, and i remember when i was a, a little girl asking questions and it would just be shut down like like that I so get. so that's why there was so much grief because it was two lifetimes the lifetime of a child and the lifetime of a woman a battered woman emotionally you know Yes. Yes. So you talked before we even started our recording, you talked about three things that were key for you. Three yes. things. And I think those three things are key for our listeners and the people that are watching this, this YouTube podcast. They need those three things. It's like, it's like the air that you breathe. It's like the food. Right. We, we need these things. So when we yeah. get confronted with these three things, I think they're going to be powerful. They're going to explode inside and they're going to make people realize that they need to do something for themselves for God to open a way, a way that they have not seen before. Right. Like it happens yes. to you. Would you right. bring that out and bring it like a shower of blessings, my dear? Yes. And, and you're right, Monica. And the thing is, <clears throat> I want to encourage your listeners, we can't just pray in the dark prayer closet alone. We have to be looking for the opportunities the Lord is going to send in our path. You see, exactly. if we have an opportunity to connect with a Bible study or a therapist or a counselor or a woman's uh, support group, we need to reach out to those people because in our brokenness, we just can't be at home praying all day long because God is not going to send a lightning bolt. He's going to send somebody in a rowboat or a helicopter or a balloon or a rope, right? Exactly. To drag us across the chasm that we have to traverse. Then we also have to be aware that there's resources are there areas of my life that I didn't know about? Yes. I didn't know about emotions. I, I thought a boundary was a fence between you and your neighbor. You know, I thought you had to do whatever anybody told you you had to do. I didn't know I had choices. Wow. 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 So I just want other women to know that even though we're praying, we have to be looking out there for the anchor line, the rope the helicopter, you know, the hand that is going to reach out and pull us across the chasm. Exactly. Exactly. So give it to us. Reach up. Reach we have up. to ask. The Lord. Reach up. Reach up. We have to reach up. We have to reach in. Reach we have in. to see what about me is broken that needs healing. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean I'm bad. I'm not a broken person, but God restores and God heals. Wow. But God wants us to put in community, right? We need others to help us. My family wasn't the community that could support me. 
Mm -hmm. So I found a community of others, Bible study, divorce recovery, uh, prayer warriors, sisters at church that could hold me up in a hard time, colleagues that could center around me to hold me up. You know what I mean? You need to look for those resources that can carry you forward if you don't have those resources in your family. Wow. So, and then, and then number three, you have to reach within, and that's the growth part. Mm. Wow. The growth part. Yes. Yes. My people perish for lack of knowledge. And how wonderful it is that we are able to listen to precious women like this power woman that brings out her heart today to all of you. And do you have a couple of words to close this moment, Miss Susie, that will just bring it together so we could just- I, I would just out. urge the listeners to know that their life is precious because I know I felt like a broken woman for a long time, but I just remembered Jeremiah 29, 11. I know the plans I have for you, said the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you but we have to reach for those resources beautiful beautiful people i love i love this miss susie you are a treasure walking on this earth thank you so much for your wisdom for your story for being so so clear and not hiding things so people could really identify with you. You'll be seeing in the handles of the podcast and also um, in everything that we're going to write about her before you even go into, you're going to see all her information, where you can locate her, where you could follow her and where you could buy her books. And uh, this podcast is also backed up and sponsored by La Viva City in Orlando, Florida. It's the Church Without Walls, also sponsored by Top Empowerment to bring out all your news and your brand and all that good stuff. And obviously, it's sponsored by the Monica Go Coaching and Podcast. Miss Susie, a big hug for you. <laughs> we love you by the distance from California to Florida. Just a big hug for you and your family. God bless you. And remember, family, to give it a go. Everybody needs to give it a go because God already gave a go for you. Blessings, Mark. Uh -huh.